I want to welcome you to this journey that will educate you about stress and will teach you things that you can do. The use of behaviors and the use of specific techniques that will reduce the effect of stress on your mental and physical health. I think it's important you know a little bit about who I am. I've had quite a bit of experience in this field. I began working with stress approximately 40 years ago and studying stress, what it does, what it is, how to reduce the effects of stress on health, and have implemented many programs in Western Pennsylvania to help people. I have been a faculty member at the University of Pittsburgh and the University of Pittsburgh Medical School since 1972 when I came to Pittsburgh. I was at the university for 45 years and retired in 2017 so that I could devote more time to working with people in communities and helping people improve the quality of their mental and physical health by engaging in programs that taught them about stress and how you can better manage it. And that is the journey which I will take you upon. All of the work that I did and my colleagues around the world did was funded by, for example, the National Institutes of Health, published over 250 publications, uh, was involved in the academic and the real world more recently uh, for uh, the benefit of people. The most important thing that I think I've done is training many individuals to continue to work in this field. Uh, but essentially, uh, now that we know as much as we do and are able to do as much as we can, uh, people of all ages are able to increase their ability to manage stress and improve the quality of their mental and physical health. So let's go on to the next slide and take a look at what we'll be covering in this series of presentations on PowerPoint. There are eight sections to this journey that I'm going to take you on, and they are listed here. So section one is will be an overview of stress and how stress alters health, and that section will be starting on the next slide of this PowerPoint. Section two, which will be uh, the next PowerPoint, will motivate you, will provide you information that will motivate you to want to do the things that we will be talking about and motivate you to want to increase your ability to manage stress. Section three will teach you about how stress affects your mind and section four will teach you how stress affects your body. Section five will teach you how to use behaviors to reduce the effect of stress on your health. And section six will talk about techniques that you can use to reduce the effect of acute stress on your health, while section seven will teach you about things that you can do to reduce the effect of chronic stress on your health. And finally, section eight will teach you and talk about guidelines to promote a long and healthy life for you. All the terms that I use will be explained. Everything will become clear as we go along. This slide is a summary of the effects of stress on your body. And I will keep showing this to you in each of these sections just to remind you of the various parts of the body, mental and physical parts of the body that are affected by stress. I do a lot of rep repetition and that's important because repetition is what will help you remember what we're talking about. I need to repeat things to remember them. We all need and just hearing them once isn't enough. So I will keep referring to the slide and you will be seeing it in each of the sections that 
uh, we, we go through. So the critical question is, what is stress? And once we know what stress is, how can stress alter our health? So I'm going to give you a definition of stress, uh, which may sound kind of weird, but as we continue on, it will make a lot of sense to you. And again, I will be repeating things because there's a lot of information. The information is for your benefit to keep you healthy and so that you can help others that are important to you, those that you love and who love you, to keep healthy. In regard to stress, there is a reality. There have been several decades of meaningful research conducted by outstanding scientists all over the world who have shown that stress does have an effect on health and what we can do about it. So without question, there is an increased risk of both mental and physical health. I will describe these to you as we go on, give you details about them. And these mental and physical health problems primarily occur in individuals who cannot cope with the stress in their life. And we'll be referring to this word cope frequently. And again, as we go on, you will understand what I mean by this. And it's important that you do. When you learn how to cope with stress, which you will be doing, there will be benefit, as I have said, to both your mental and physical health. And it's important to realize that stress affects both mental and physical health. And again, you will be getting details about this. But also, if you are not mentally and or physically healthy, your quality of life can be affected. You can do something. You can start to do things which will affect your mental and physical health and therefore quality of life. So as we go on, this will all become increasingly clear to you. I'm not just going to tell you things, but I'm going to educate you. This program that you're going through will provide education for you so that you understand what stress is and why it has negative effects on health and what you can do to reduce the effects of stress on your health. Just telling you doesn't really motivate you to want to do things to increase your ability to cope with stress. So by educating you about how stress affects health and what the effects of stress are on health, I'm hoping and I know that you will be motivated to make changes to increase your ability to cope with stress. We have worked with thousands of individuals over the past 15 or so years, and there will be comments from people later on as we go ahead uh, in the next section, uh, which would just be words from people who have participated in our programs. And I provide these to you for motivation to get you to understand that this stuff we're talking about is real. It works. All right, now let's finally get to what is stress. This explanation is going to seem a little bit strange, but as we go on, it will make, uh, make sense to you and it will serve as motivation to you. Stress results when something, something you see, you hear, you experience, something that happens, something you see, exceeds the ability of your brain, your mind to effectively cope with the event. So whatever this is that your brain perceives, that your brain experience, this event is stronger, exceeds the ability of your mind to effectively cope with the event. So let's now understand this better. 
when your mind, your brain, cannot cope with the stress. What happens? That areas of your brain, we call the stress reactive areas, become activated. And these things have names. They're called the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus, the locus cerealis. The names aren't important. What is important that these brain areas become active when the stress exceeds the ability of your brain to cope with it. And again, we'll clarify this. The concentration of hormones, stress hormones in the blood increases when your mind cannot cope with the stress. So you see something, you hear something, you experience something, your brain considers this to be stress. When your brain considers it to be stress, there is activation of some areas of the brain. When these areas of your brain become active, they cause an increase in the concentration of certain hormones in your blood. We lump these together as stress hormones. They, they have names like cortisol and epinephrine and norepinephrine. The increased amount of stress hormones, the increased amount of these hormones, is the reason that stress has an effect on the function, the quality of your mental and physical health. Stated again, it is the hormones that alter your health when you are exposed to stress. It's the brain areas become active. They cause these hormones to go up. And when the hormones go up, that is when there's going to be an effect on your mental and physical health. It is important to realize, and I'm sure you're aware, that stress cannot be avoided. There is stress everywhere. And how we each respond to stress differs. I'm sure you've had the experience that you've been exposed to something and you said to a friend or somebody with you, Boy, that causes me a lot of stress. And that person has said, no, 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 it, that really doesn't. That's not a lot of stress. People perceive stress differently. And a lot of it has to do with our background. But there are things out in society, in relationships, in the world that each of us will perceive as stress. It may not be the same thing as somebody else, but it's there. And if you cannot cope with the stress, okay, and coping means that to keep the brain areas calm so they don't become active, it is difficult to engage in behaviors that promote a high quality of mental and physical health. And I'm going to explain to you shortly that when we experience stress, we don't think clearly, we don't focus, we don't do the things which we are supposed to do, the things that should keep us healthy. So it is important by coping with stress that we increase the likelihood of using behaviors, things that will help to keep ourselves calm, things that will help to keep our brains calm. So then, if stress cannot be avoided, and it cannot be, is there something that can be done to minimize the negative effect of stress on our health. Is there something that can be done so that the stress has less of an effect on our health than it otherwise would? And the obvious answer is, yes, there is. We can't make the stress go away, but we what we can do is change the way our brain responds to stress. We call these increasing the, abil the ability to cope with stress or the development of buffering skills. A buffer is something which reduces the influence on one thing of something else. So the buffering skills, which I'll be referring to as coping skills, reduce the effect, minimize the effect of stress on the brain. It reduces the activation of the stress reactive areas of the brain. And you're going to be learning about the behaviors and techniques to do this. 
Now, here is a very simple drawing. Uh, simple because I made it. The big circle represents the brain. And this is to show what I've been talking about. The smaller circle, which is labeled areas of the brain responsive to stress, are the stress reactive brain areas. They're the principally the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus and the locus cerealis. Every one of you has these in your brain. So when stress is perceived by your brain, whatever your brain considers to be stress, and remember, it's going to be different things for different people. Strong stressors, of course, are perceived by everybody. But the stress is perceived by your brain. It activates the brain responsive areas to stress, and that causes an increase in the concentration of various hormones in the blood, and these are what causes the health effects. When you develop coping skills or buffers, this blocks the activation of the stress reactive brain areas. So your brain perceives something as stress. However, its effect on activating the stress responsive brain areas is decreased. And then what happens is the concentration of hormones in blood is decreased. So coping with stress is the use of behaviors and techniques to reduce the response of the brain to stress, resulting in less of an elevation of the stress hormones when you experience stress. And this is what you want to achieve. I restate this several times because it's so important. Unless you understand why you want to use coping skills, how they function, how stress activates the brain, you're going to be less induced to want to use the behaviors and techniques that minimize stress activation of the brain. And this is the last slide of this section. And what we have done on this section, this was section one, overview of stress and how stress alters health. The next series will be section two, which will involve my attempting, and I hope successfully, to motivate you to want to use the various behaviors and techniques that you will learn that will reduce the effect of stress on the brain and increase your quality of mental and physical health.